So let's talk about how society teaches us what to believe, and sometimes we don't even know why we believe it. Wow, well, that's, that's a hot topic right now. I mean, even in politics, you know, you can split the country down the middle, right? Who, who believes uh, that Trump had the, the best interests of America at heart, and then you have other people who believe that Biden is going to undo all of Trump's wrongings and make, every, make the world a better place. I mean, it's just both sides. There's a, there's a certain degree of acceptance and delusion. It's two different realities. Totally different realities. And, but yet one is extremely passionate, right? And then the other side is equally as passionate and has reasons why they feel that way. But the reality is, is there's a huge segment of them that the reason why they feel that way is because of their peer group, mm -hmm. right? If you go to New York, you, someone is the scum of the earth if they're not vaccinated, mm -hmm. right? But then if you go to other parts of the country, a lot of people aren't vaccinated and it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. So it's almost as if the public perspe uh, perspective or perception or the meaning of giving events has more to do with their community. Mm -hmm. And what has influence over the community? Well, then you get into the media. So, you know, you take it down the rabbit hole and then you start questioning, do I even have my own beliefs? <laughs> Why do I believe what I do? Why does my hair look the way it does? Why do I shave the way, the way I shave? Why do I dress the way? I, like, where did all this come from? Yeah, what's even real? What's even real anymore? And how much is it is because this is who I am? And how much of it is just because this is who they told me who I am? Mm -hmm. Right? So then, the, if, if you grew up Catholic, chances are you're more likely to be Catholic mm -hmm. than you are to be Islamic or to be Jewish. Right? It's just mm -hmm. the way it is. Whatever you observe, you participate with. Whatever you spend time with has an influence. Mm -hmm. The TV shows, the books you read, the media you watch, the movies you watch, right? The people you circumstantially hang out with, your yeah. peers, have a massive influence on you and how you see yourself in the world, your identity. And that's why people do what they do. You know, it's, it's interesting to see how in certain states, they have where, where people are almost minors and they can choose what sex they want to be and have mutilation done in their body to change according to how they perceive themselves. When, in my opinion, they're at an age where their identity isn't even fully developed. No, I so you're having someone alter their body physically when neurologically they're not even fully developed yet and that decision isn't even solidified yet. That's that's, that's uh, there's consequences to that. I agree with that. That, that are gonna flare up in time yeah. and not be viewed favorably, in my opinion. Yeah, I did see a story that there's some trans kids that made the switch and then regretted it later and they were kind of forced into it. You're not a lizard, you're not growing that back, buddy. Once, you, once yeah. that stuff gets removed, yeah. that's a done deal. And then here, maybe it, the person made that decision at an age where they were influenced because that's where they got love, that's where they got significance, that's where they got connections. So they were getting at least three of their human needs that Tony Robbins talks about, and then now they want to go that way, when in reality, not because they want to change their reproductive parts, mm -hmm. but because that's how they're getting their human needs met. That's just the way we're wired. We want to get those needs met. What are the human needs? Uh, well, there's, there's, Tony has tons there's of videos. List. You can tune into oh, that. Okay. So look at to, uh, Tony Robbins, Six Human Needs. He goes into it in depth, and he has okay. short videos as well as longer videos. So back to the person living their nature. Uh, I, you know, I often say it, it, it typically doesn't matter to me as a practitioner whether someone choose to be, or, or I should say whether or not someone chooses to play out their nature, which might be heterosexual or homosexual or gay, lesbian, trans, whatever that feels right to them. That, that makes no difference to me as a practitioner. What makes a difference to me as a practitioner is that they're living their nature. And what we see is the more someone gets connected to their body with the consciousness exercises, the more those socialized cues of telling you who you are and what you're about seem to dissolve and the more of the person inside, it's almost as if we have a natural voice. We have an innate volume and, uh, of, of who you are and what you're about. And the more people get connected with their own physiology, their own body, the more that volume gets turned up louder and louder and louder of who you are and what you're about. And the socialized cues tend to matter less and less and less. So what my experience has been as a practitioner is the more tight the person is, the more disconnected they are, the more they're living outside of their nature. 
and the more relaxed and open and peaceful are, chances are the more they're living in their nature, and which is interesting because as we help create more of that progressively with network care and the consciousness exercises, you see the person start having inclinations towards something totally different than what they were before. Whether it's food, whether it's activity, whether it's exercise or not, whether it's who they're attracted to, it's amazing to see the person go back to that, what works for them, and less of what society said who they are and what they're about. Because they feel safe rediscovering who they actually are and not falling prey to social cues. That's right. So they're not going through life so much living their wounds, but instead living more of their nature, whatever that is. And it's amazing to see the more connected and open someone gets, they don't feel like doing this anymore. I know that they've always got their needs that way and they were good at it, but they're like, you know, I just don't feel that, that I'm interested in that anymore and I feel like I want to take a different direction and it feels really good to me and it feels right and the more I listen to that, the better I actually feel and the more energy I have. It's as if they're finding that congruence with their inner nature and who they are, where life is effortless. And they're rewarded by doing that, so they're going to continue down that path. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we're all living a life, right, and a lifestyle. Is it effortless? Do we feel supported? Do we feel like that's re yeah, that really just feels right to us? Or is it more of, hey, we, we're going this way, our friends do that, I, I, you know, I get my needs met, I get, you know, I'm making money with it, but does it really light me up as a human being? The more we work on them with the network care, the more they do the consciousness exercises, the more that internal voice, that nature, that part of you that knows, hey, this doesn't feel right anymore. Hey, I feel like going in this other direction. And the, the comfort or the, the, the desire, the willingness to make that change. The more connected you get as an individual, the more uncomfortable your life is going to be if it doesn't serve you. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really cool. Because it's almost like we have some kind of internal mechanism that lets us know, hey man, you're on the right path or no, you're not on the ideal path. And to feel safe doing that. And feel good doing it. And, and, and safety is a start, but feeling, feeling jazzed, mm -hmm. feeling euphoric almost, feeling liberated, feeling passionate, that's where our, nat our natural state is. Wow. And if you're on a path and that's what you feel, keep doing it. If you're doing something where you're getting your needs met and you feel safe, right, the thief of dreams, but you don't feel passionate and excited and, and just, you know, just have that enthusiasm, then do the NSA work, do the consciousness exercises, and how amazing is it to see people follow more of their path and less of what society said, oh, you should do this, you should be an attorney, you should be a doctor. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's countless how many people have come into our office that became the doctor, became the attorney, did this, did that, because they wanted to make their mom and dad proud. And who doesn't want that? But let me tell you, they'll be more proud when they see their kid grew up as a, as a man or as a woman and is doing something that they're passionate about rather than something that they're... They'll be more successful. They're miserable about. Yeah, they're happy. At the end of the day, as a parent, I can tell you, all I want is for my kids to be happy. If they're happy and they're passionate and they're excited, I don't care what they're doing. Have you ever seen anybody change their uh, sexual identity after NSA care? Like I could tell you I have had people come in the office that were and had an identity. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm bisexual or I'm binary, which mm -hmm. from my ignorance, I haven't gotten into that much, but it's about the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, or, or whatever their, their preference is, they might have that perspective because that's not what they're really drawn to, but because that's what they've been socialized towards. And I'm not saying one's right or wrong. I don't have any judgment or any caring who, what, who or what you snuggle up to. It's right? just a social theme right now. But oftentimes what they're going towards is because of that's what that's been socialized, but not really what their nature is, mm -hmm. whether it's the same sex or different sex. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is if you want to be congruent with who you are as a person, get more connected to your nature and turn up the volume and see what happens. And it might show that, yeah, you are on the path that serves you. Or you might actually realize, you know what, this, what I was doing before doesn't feel congruent with, with where I feel like I want to go anymore. And I actually feel like I want to go in a different direction. Like they were doing it for the wrong reasons, for attention and validation or that's, like that, that's a possibility. short term need 
truths sure. instead of what actually with their true self. Sure, or maybe they got rejected or maybe they have a wound mm. is associated with a certain gender. So they just don't feel comfortable and every time they're around that gender and viewed in, in that way, the, it brings up their wounds. So they have an aversion to that, so they want a direction. But maybe as they do the conscious exercises and get worked on and do the body work and are freed of that trauma, it's possible that people have options now that maybe weren't available to them before. And they're more confident making those decisions because they're more comfortable with who th their true nature. Sure, so you could say more confident or maybe it just feels more right to them is, okay. is what clients typically communicate with me.